Well, Samantha Burgess is Deputy Director of the Copernicus Climate Change Service, which is one of the organizations who published that report. Dr. Burgess, thank you very much to, for joining us. So Europe is, is going way over uh, that goal of keeping temperatures below a certain point. What is going wrong? Yes, that's right. So Europe in 2023 saw a huge number of records, a record proportion of Europeans affected by heat stress, record sea surface temperatures and record melting of glaciers. We also saw a huge number of extreme events, which we know are likely to become more frequent and more intense due to climate change. And the reality is that with the Paris Agreement limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees, and we're uh, very close to that in terms of global temperatures. We're not seeing enough global action. We are also seeing uh, cities, communities across the world, in fact, just not really well equipped for these disasters, massive impact on habitat and human life and wildlife. Why are we not better prepared? Frankly, we've had these warnings for years and years. Yes, you're right. We've had warnings since the late 90s with the, the second IPCC report that was published in the late 90s, warning of the certainty of human-caused climate change and the impacts to life. I, I think one of the disconnects between the scientific evidence and uh, action at national level and at city scale level is that climate change was often posed as a future problem with projections talking about what happens in 2050 or in 2100. And the reality is that climate change is here, it's impacting citizens around the world right now and our cities and our um, biodiversity is maladapted to the climate temperatures that we're facing right now. The report indicates there's a significant increase in heat-related deaths in Europe. That's actually over the past two decades where we've seen all these rates just intensify. Talk to me about why it's leading to, to deaths of humans. What's going wrong? So heat-related mortality has increased by around 30% in the past 20 years. And in July last year, for the first time in history, the climate crisis and related extreme weather events was declared a public health emergency by the World Health Organization in Europe. And the reality is that most of us live in cities. In cities, there's a lot of built environments, a lot of hard substrates, concrete and glass, which gives us much warmer uh, temperatures than what we have in the countryside where there's green spaces. So when we look at the, the heat waves that are affecting not only Europe, but large parts of the world, these heat waves are amplified in city environments where you can get a increase in temperatures of you know up to five degrees more than you would in a residential area or in the countryside. We are seeing, and this is perhaps the, a glimmer of hope, more renewable energy, solar and wind power coming on board, moving away from fossil fueled power. How much is that actually helping? Yeah, so in 2023, 43% of energy generation was by renewable energy sources. And this is the, the largest proportion of renewable energy used so far in Europe. And it's the second year in a row that renewable energy uh, was higher than a polluting fossil fuel energy. So the reality is that we not only have the technology to transition to renewable energy, and the economic studies have shown that it's better value for money, that every single fraction of a degree matters. So the quicker we decarbonize our economies and get to net zero as quickly as possible, the quicker our temperature will stabilize, and this will have implications for the number, intensity and frequency of extreme events that we'll face in the years to come. Thank you very much, Dr. Samantha Burgess, Deputy Director of the Copernicus Climate Change Service. Thank you.